So we've got a bit of a perfect storm out there, Dr. Waltman. We have got COVID, flu season, RSV in the mix. For parents, if their child starts to show symptoms, is there a way to differentiate between these three things? Ultimately, when it comes to families' approach to managing these different illnesses, they're going to be presenting the same. So we're seeing symptoms that include fever, runny nose and cough. Sometimes children will develop respiratory difficulty or may even have headaches and chills. So when parents see these type of things in their children, what should their first action be? So um, many of these symptoms can be managed at home with supportive care and medications like Tylenol and Advil. Now, I recognize there have been many challenges with respect to accessing these medications, but our pharmacists and family doctors are available to help parents troubleshoot when needed. Um, making sure that a child is drinking well is very important. Oftentimes, children will have decreased appetite, and that's okay as long as they're able to stay well hydrated. We are noticing illness such as the flu lasting up to seven to 10 days of symptoms, which is a long time, especially when parents have to take time off work. Um, but this is still consistent with a viral illness of which all of what you mentioned, COVID, influenza, RSV, fall into that category. So let's talk about the flu because obviously it is flu season. It is everywhere, not just for children, but beyond. But when it comes to kids, you know, for the purpose of this conversation, what about the flu shot with children? Uh, when does that become a good idea? How often should that be happening? All of the flu shot details. That's an excellent question. The flu shot has been around for a very long time and is eligible for children above the age of six months. It's recommended on a yearly basis. This season, we've seen incredibly high rates of influenza and it's been coming earlier. So we've been seeing the past two months, just such an intense and sharp rise in influenza, which is atypical, but the season typically lasts until January or February where we see its peak. And there are different types of influenza. So even getting the flu shot now would be very important for the rest of the season. So flipping over to RSV, we've seen those initials in the headlines over and over and over again over the past month. Why is this type of virus something that is affecting children? So RSV uh, stands for respiratory syncytial virus. And many times children will be exposed to that virus before the age of two years old. But given the restrictions we've had during the pandemic, there's an even larger population that's never seen this virus. For adults and older children who have been exposed to the virus before, it presents as a cold. But for younger children, typically under the age of two, but now I would even extend that to be under the age of five, are struggling with their first exposure to this virus, and some are requiring hospitalization to help them with their breathing. All right, well, we talked about home treatments and how all of these three things that we're talking about all present themselves the same, but at what point does a parent look at their child that is going through this and say, you know what, at this point, hospital care is needed? Right, so there's a couple steps before you may even choose to come into the hospital where you may seek medical attention. So if you have a fever that's lasting five days, but a child is otherwise drinking well, and coping with the illness, it would be a good idea to check in with your family doctor or if needed with a walk-in clinic. Mm -hmm. Reasons to come to the emergency department uh, would be if you have a fever that's not responding to the medication, um, where you have a child who might not be waking up and responding as you would expect them to, breathing with difficulty or faster than they normally would, or if you're concerned for their hydration, so they're really not drinking well and aren't able to, to pee and to uh, you know, respond as you would anticipate. 